So if things are right on YouTube, we are now live the 4th of June 2017. There's a webcam I should look at. Um, talk about Beethoven's Opus 14 number one, Piano Sonata number nine. Just going into some details on performance. My take on the uh, interpretation, so to say, and go with you through that piece. First movement. So um, that's for in a minute. Anya is working on the tablet that I can see who is joining us and just can say hello. Before we do that, okay, she's already coming. She's much faster than me. Before we dive into that, I want to give a quick shout out to actually the patrons of Authentic Sound. They are financially supporting these live streams and some other videos. We have now a community of 31 people actually that's really great who are supporting the projects uh, we are doing both Anya and I are doing so thank you very much hi good luck thank you <laughs> <laughs> so if you would like to have um, an eye on that there is a link in the description box would really appreciate if you check it out so we have uh, different reward systems so three dollars a month we may you, you read it how it works you will get the uh, CD quality files of the YouTube recordings. The $5 range gets also this personal scan, so the scan of my personal score. And for instance, now I'm editing the Bach partitas. So yes, that project is still ongoing. It's a long-term project. And every part of every uh, partita that's finished, I upload the CD quality file to the Patreon wall. So it's available for all the Patreons. And by the way, since this month we will be having monthly chats, monthly video calls where we just can hang out with each other. And the first one is actually this Wednesday at 9.30 p.m. Central European Summer Time. So just mentioning that in case uh, you would check it out. We would really appreciate it a lot because it makes our projects also a little bit more sustainable, which is a very good thing considering the project we are going to do in the near future. So thank you for that. Um, so we are now diving into the Beethoven piece. Uh, see Robin is on the chat. Hello. So Anya is on the chat as well. So if you have questions, don't hesitate to just type them in. The live stream has a delay of about one minute sometimes. Shouldn't be like that, but sometimes it is. So it, I might just miss or skip one of your questions if you have one in um, in the course of the live stream. I will be looking from time to time on the chat. It's difficult to build up my expose, so to say, and constantly looking on the chat, but I will be regularly there. And if I miss something, Anya will uh, take notice of that. So there's Anya. <laughs> okay, great. I turned the webcam, not the webcam, the, uh, now is this this tablet? because I don't like to see myself with one minute of the delay. Um, and I will put it here so I can see and read in the live chat. That's not working. I'm doing it in. So I'm using actually the damping cloth I'm using for tuning. Great. Multifunctional clavichord. I have some tea here. You might hear some problems with my voice. I have some kind of cold and yeah that's not very good for my voice but anyway I'm going to play the, the part of the section here for you um, that's a little change of normal practice but I realize it might be better for you if I just play some lines or two pages and then when we move on I will play a little bit more now there is a computer game on my tablet that's being played by Evelyn so I better turn that off you can see it's very interesting has nothing to do with uh... okay I guess there are some 5,000 pages open now on the on the tablet and I better check the uh, check it out? the sound system so it was making sounds as well so now the live stream is off there I am again okay fine With children, it's always things unexpectedly happening. Now that the whole tablet is completely gone, so... I put it away, I will take it, just play first. 
And then I have a little expose and then I check the live stream, the chat. There we go. And so on, this is the first the exposition, so to say. So I'll try to reach my own live stream again. I really have no idea where it is. So here is something that pops up. I click on that and there is a live chat. Okay, and now I'm going to be very careful with this, not pushing any button. Oh my. I hate tablets, really. They are very handy, but in use, so it's nothing for me. Anyway, so some people asked me after the uh, video I made on the tempo and movement. We're not going to talk much about tempo because I made that video on purpose to be a little bit free of that. But just to give you an idea of what was the Allegro meaning, I was reading in Czerny. It's here, if you join on this, I will. It's interesting to know because we're talking about Allegro and Allegro is something fast and actually that's <coughs> a kind of thing we made of it. We narrowed down the Allegro character and what it meant in fact um, to just fast. But if you go to the Opus 500 of Journey, the third part where he's talking about performance practice, so that's really interesting to read what he has to say about that. Then he says that the character of a stone stuck is well, is with Allegro bezeichnet is, can sehr verschiedene artig sein. Namely, so the characters of a musical piece that has been indicated to be played in Allegro ha can have many more, can uh, can have a, a range of characters. Interesting connection of the Italian, 
what we call tempo work to a character was really something they did. So, and the first definition of uh, Allegro that Jenny gives, he gives one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, Allegro means ruhig, sanft und einschmeichend. So, very uh, relaxing, soft and einschmeichend, or I don't know in English. It, it, the sound of the word says what it, what it means. So ruhig sounds very calm and soft. That's something that is really new if you are not familiar with the old meanings. Then second definition, and it goes up in, in a little bit in tempo. So tiefsinnig oder schwärmerisch. Tiefsinnig means very deep, uh, philosophical, und schwärmerisch in English would be a kind of dreamery, so a little bit dreamy. Then C, third, schwermutig oder harmonisch verwickelt, so very depressed a little bit, serious oder harmonisch verwickelt, I cannot translate that. Then D, majestätisch, großartig und erhaben, so we already in the fourth definition, not one word on, on, on fast, so majestätisch is majestic, big, really, uh, I would say, unterhaben, again, not possible for me now to translate an English, you get in English, you get the point. Then the fifth definition is, then we come to brilliant, jedoch ohne Anspruch auf allzu große Bewegung der Gelaufigkeit. So the fifth definition is brilliant, uh, but without any um, um, anspruch, any definition or any incorporation of a playing that would use you too much of a fast playing. So Gelaufigkeit is the, uh, the fast playing. And then it comes to light, the light, uh, happy, munter und scherzend. So a little bit funny. Then we are with the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then it comes to rush und entschieden. That's very precise, a kind of fast and entschieden, very deutlich, very, 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 uh, uh, now I'm mixing German and English again, which is so difficult. So, yeah, I only want to say that just the term Allegro is not saying something. And here is Allegro without a second word, which is putting it in, according to Jenny, in the first category. And I think here it makes sense to give that definition of Jenny, because it really is a piece that is calm, ruhig, so really relaxed, and very playful, a kind of a, what we have seen in the Opus 40 number two, with the two voices, you have it here as well. So the tempo I take is so very relaxed, four, four, four quarter notes, bar structure a little bit faster than the tempo ordinario, which sounds a little bit weird if you are used to that piece and a faster movement, it takes a little bit of time. So at the beginning I give a little bit of accent on the second quarter note. Also to give that three eight notes a kind of definition, a structure in its own, because it's a kind of counter um, <coughs> rhythm against the long notes in the right hand, which are the melody, of course. If I wouldn't do that, it would miss a little bit of pulse. a little bit and then here that's wonderful I mean you have this left hand go to the D sharp and the D sharp of course on the piano and the, the clavicle clavicle is a difficult position this though so you need to prepare you need to have time to prepare and something weird is happening on my tablet again Because you need time to lay down this, this. If you go too fast, and not again, it, I don't really care if somebody wants to play it fast. I don't, don't want to say there's only one way of performing, but that's how I feel that. If you go too fast, you come into problems on that point. You kind of fall there, and just by reducing the tempo to a normal speed, 
Build up tension and then you can lay that be so nice. And that's so friendly then. And then joyful. It's like children chasing each other. And also the last B, again we end. This B will be very important, but make it long enough that you hear it. So if you make that last note shorter, then you miss a kind of this chasing effect I demonstrate. If it stays, it's better, it gives hierarchy. Very serious. And so this is real polyphonic here. The bow ends on the A sharp. I don't know if there's a link in the description to the score, but I guess you'll find it easily. So the ending of the bow means a little articulation. To emphasize the C, go back, it gets in the bass. So the trick is to let all that, uh, to pronounce that all very clearly. Bass. So a lot have been said until now. We've had the beginning. Kind of serious. Like where is he going? This chord is of course opening a lot. Then building up of the tension even now. Beginning of the piece a kind of... A kind of ending. Then joyful. Serious. Or big, or really storytelling. All voices combined, and only in bar eleven bars far we have said a lot in the beginning. So also that needs preparation. And as soft as possible. I mean, very pronounced, very clear. The clavichord work great in that. And don't rush. And here the, the crescendo. Let it build by itself. Forte. Suddenly piano. Forte. Piano. Fortissimo. Forzando. For Tissimo for Giando. And then the big contrast second team. And the trick is here not to hurry. And then this beautiful legato. So I mean he makes portato, so the quarter notes with a dot, and he connects those quarter notes with a, with a slur. And then at the end he gives legato to this high point. Opera. No, I'm really exaggerating, but you can feel now. This F sharp I could make as long as I want. Certainly on the clavicle. Of course, that's not the meaning, but you get a feel for what I want to say. The contrast is really big when the. When the So a little bit out of tempo is really no problem for me. I believe you can read in Schindler also that he had for different sections he is not very clear in that. I, I don't I cannot assume that he 
that Beethoven took real different tempos in different sections, but in that's that's the that's the great thing if you have a tempo that works, a movement that works, and that gives you room for expression and contrast, and that when you once have that line, that balance, that movement, where everything falls in line, then a slight touch on that is a big deal. Just going a little bit below and then everybody, the audience will feel that you are, will come back to the normal tempo and that's, that's great, you can do it here. So we end like this. Two, three, four, one, two. Of course you take the rest a little bit longer. Now I'm draining the tempo. A little bit. To give expression here. It's a story that's being told. Again here. And then this beautiful weird polyphonic. Yeah, but here on. You listen again, the attention on the high note, and I don't want to say it to stand still, but you can just demonstrate how the attention, how big it is. And the funny thing is, I don't know if you have the score, I can show it to you, um, but that's typically Beethoven, he has this. This accent, this crescendo, decrescendo line, so there's no light here. So I hope you see this here. So basically he gives uh, the markings where he says crescendo and decrescendo on the note that gives you not a possibility to make crescendo and decrescendo. But funny enough, there was a beautiful comment made on Facebook, something I didn't know actually and didn't research about. I should have known perhaps. By, by Neil Coleman. He is really a guy who knows so much about clavichord. He's very active in the clavichord group as well. So I've posted obviously that the recording of me of Opus 14 number two there and someone asked Beethoven clavichord question mark. Of course, if someone sees it for the first time, it's a, it's a very le legitimate question. And Neil pointed out that he played recently on what for 90.9% .9 sure has been the clavichord that was owned by Beethoven. Shorter compass, I think four octaves. Um, I believe fretted, but beautifully made that he used for composing. And was actually given as a gift by Baron von Waldstein. That's, that's a nice coincidence. So um, in beautiful wood with inlay and an expensive instrument and in fact, I was thinking that the clavichord in that time was something to give by a baron. I mean, that shows how important the instrument still was. But Beethoven, of course, having had an education as a clavier spieler with Neve, Gottlob Neve, who was a clavichord player. Neve is one of the few who actually um, composed pieces explicitly for the clavichord. Yeah, it's black, the tablet. I'm just trying to fix the tablet. So he had the clavicle still in his fingers and then he was using that little beautiful instrument to compose on. And I think that those markings come from that because if I play on the piano, even on my own rare piano, you, you want to give a little bit more. And of course not possible. So on a piano you need to make the suggestion. The clavicle you can do really something. Hey. I hope that goes through the YouTube live stream. Again. And then hit the relief. Yo.
by the way, this F sharp is missing here, but in the manuscript and I believe the first edition is also missing. So that this was clearly written on a five octave instrument, but Beethoven wasn't happy because he wanted to have this F sharp. So originally it's, if I have six octaves in hopefully in a few months on the piano, of course we'll play that uh, C F sharp. So here you have a melody in the left hand, which is hard to bring out. It's a simple melody, but it, it, it enlightens the music so much just by bringing it. Contrast for the ending. Here you have 16 triplets that are not used structurally, so they're not influencing the basic tempo. They're just an ornament, a written out ornament. So, so in this piece, it's just a quarter note basis. And there you go. Is there something I should read? Um, no, there's not really questions. I'm so I'm clear. Just listening. That's, that's great. That's the easiest thing for me. I just can ramble on. But here the, the 30, the, the 16 triplets in the bass give a, give a nice uh, majestic feel to the whole. And the key is... Sorry. MSCG sharp, now it comes. I sometimes wonder if, if, of course, if you are used to a much faster performance, then this is setting a step back. But if you would not know this music and you would just hear this, then it's not slow. I mean, those tempo issues have nothing to do with slow or fast. That's a, that's how your that's how your perception works. But within a slower beat, slower pulse, a normal pulse, you can have these differentiations, which often gives a more lively effect. So quarter notes. If you have time to again stronger. And the conclusion. Time. Piano. And a beautiful ending. So pianissimo in the bass, pianissimo in the right hand, which is very low. That's extremely difficult on the clavicle because here it's, and that's on the piano a little bit different, but it's also different on the piano. I've tried this when I was in Ingolstadt. Um, so pianissimo, but how I'm going to play the, the bass, not too soft. It's pianissimo, so within the range of pianissimo, but it should sound. You should hear this beautiful bass singer voice with a very soft string accompaniment. And on clavichord, the trick is to make the first, so the first eight note of the tree a little bit longer. That's against the beginning. You will not hear it. It does work well enough in a way here. But then you, it's difficult to explain, but you're kind of warming up the string so the second and the third attack will go much, much easier. That's, that's possibly and certainly an explanation for that. An ending, a little bit, a little bit of rebato. So also, each note a little bit of pulse, which is only on the clavichord possible. But on the piano it would be too much, it would be too much. It's, the piano sounds great and that, so really long and really, really full. So, bum, bum. And then an 
incredible transition. The beginning, but then this C is so incredible. And then this B also that opens in in two bars, new worlds that you cannot imagine that someone comes up with the idea. E major, nothing and nothing, it's all all fine. No, it's this. So you see. And the B, it's adding tension, crescendo. A minor. So how is that for an emotional shift? I mean, is Beethoven a great composer or not? And again, in this movement, that I feel happy with that because that's such that's happening like it's the sun is shining outside. And from bright sunshine, suddenly it's one cloud, two clouds, three clouds, and there's a thunderstorm. Unexpected. And if you play that, or I try to do that, as just give no clue. And if you have heard this piece five million times, it doesn't matter. I would have every time the same um, effect because don't give a clue. But sometimes just postpone some notes a tiny little bit. I give an example. If you do C, I, I play it without without anything. Then probably it has skipped your mind. But if I just give you a little bit of time, that what's happening I think is that in in our brain structure there is a kind of we calculate all the time what will come. So if I give this C right on time, then it's boring because yeah, we already knew. But if, and this system is so fine that if I wait one thousandth of a millisecond, your system will be, hey, I was expecting something. And then it's coming, but then it's not what you were, were expecting. You were not expecting the C natural, but the C sharp, and you were expecting it one millisecond earlier. I'll show you again the difference. So without, Again with and now with. So I did two things: postpone it a little bit and make it a little bit softer. And then the crescendo, of course. Now you know the 16-note left hand. So. He's really crying now. So all these songs are all the what's that in English? The uh, Vorschlagen. Don't play it just like eight notes. So not like a. And now I mean, that's, that's just heaven that opens. So many shades and so many different stories here. So only the, 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 the transition from the exposition to here, we talked about the A minor effect, the C, then the B, the crescendo, comes this... I doubt that if I would give them a little bit more staccato, yeah, it would be much easier on clavicle, but I don't think I need to blend everything. Crying, screaming. The, the Schenker edition gives forte piano as a kind of he want, Schenker wants to reduce the the volume, which makes sense because he's giving crescendo. But I wouldn't do that. It just it, it needs to cry there. Let's 
this point. Repeat, 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 repeat of the point. Conclusion. But instead of coming to a conclusion, he's offering a new world with piano. C major. Everything solved. Problem solved. But then. I mean, that's brilliant. I, I don't play the octaves here. Maybe I will, but this instrument sounds... It's capable of Beethoven writes octaves because on the pianoforte, this section is also loud compared to this, but on the clavichord, it kind of gets through that. And I like the color. That's, that's, that's from everything is solved. We are happy to, we are the loneliest person on the world. That in one, in one bar. Remember, we come for this. Okay. And I play it louder than I should because, but this is really terrible on the clavichord. I need to play here. This will happen. It's almost impossible to play soft. And by the way, if you play it much faster, then it doesn't work anymore on clavichord. Not saying that that's the reason why I do take these tempi. It's just another argument. I think that this music starts working again on the clavichord, what it did in those days. And then, suddenly piano, of course. Then the left hand has these beautiful notes. Immediately, immediately in the right hand go much, 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 much uh, reduced in... in, in uh, Anya was listening live. <laughs> reduced in sound. So we come from... Gives you the effect later. So this is so much as dynamic differentials that's really going on the edge of, of what the clavichord. I mean, it can do that, but what the player can do because the slightest mistake in in touch and you will hear, tip, and that's really ugly. So again, here on clavichord, the trick is to give this a little bit, not louder but longer, so that, it, that the string gets the feel of your fingers. It's difficult to, but the melody should come out. I mean. Like this, it doesn't have the same effect. But Here. Also. So nice. surprise so who is saying that this is slow <coughs> I mean, <coughs> I'm sorry my voice is getting tired now so I bring you to the point where these 16 notes are <laughs> same tempo <laughs> The 
is like a phoenix who rises out of his ashes. I mean, that's unbelievable contrast. Come in. What is going on? Again, E minor. We don't know. How sounds that? That's a confirmation of of a greatness. I mean, it's unbelievable. If you speed up a little bit there, it's no problem. Bring the tempo down now. You shouldn't. Here is a... Surprise. What's happening now? Pianissimo. Clever concerns beautifully. It's very piano. And do you hear? How also these chords, just by giving them the right energy, and maybe a little bit too late, how they work. It's like a big orchestra. And then he continues it the same way with a beautiful. I also sometimes wait a little bit because the preparation of the sound on the clavicord and these chords are really difficult. So. Again, relief, same. He's repeating what we had at the end of the middle section, but brilliantly, and there is a, there is a joke at the end. I, I play it and then I tell about These terribly distant scripts are really difficult here on the clavichord upstairs. But the, the joke is, of course, in the last part, you have every time you have every time the same tune. Boom, 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 boom. So on the end. 
it's as if he forgets to have this second eighth note in. So what it only works if you have a little bit of delay of the second eighth note. So if you play like this. Then it doesn't work. These three notes must have a kind of unity that you always expect as a kind as as moving force. Tum tum pom, tum tum tum, tum pom pom, and then at the end tum pom pom pom. Oh, that's so funny. And that shows that Beethoven was a composer full of humor and yeah, so many of those things disappear if you play over the music and as I feel it sometimes happens, if not always, but that's my personal thing. So, but those, those things are really so fine and so nuanced and so full of humor and, and contrast and that must have been the person Beethoven also, he probably was much and many times understood, misunderstood also with his hearing problem, of course. And okay, that was a little bit about the first movement. So Robin said hello. Sigmund Vollmer, nice to have you. Ricardo, Dylan. Uh, Carol, nice to have you here. Tasto Giusto, Luca, also nice. Thank you for your comment on the. Also, it's really nice to read, also, all, always. So, as always. And nice to see uh, people coming back and this. So, so again, um, yeah, we be I will be recording this piece on Thursday, next Thursday. So, that's. This Thursday at 9.30 Central European time and then in two weeks I will be having a master class wow that's a name on the second and the third movement yeah there is so much to be told about that so it's too much to fit in one that is for then and that I will be recording not next not Thursday that's coming but Thursday after so <coughs> So Ricardo, it looks very right. It looks very difficult to achieve good, good result with the clavichord. Yeah, in those extremes, it is. I must say, however, that my clavichord is uh, relatively thick strength and tuned at a, I wouldn't say too high pitch, but if I would lower the tension a little bit, it would be easier. If it would reduce the key depth a little bit, it would be easier as well. Uh, I was playing on Joris Potvlieger's own clavichord a few weeks ago at a concert in Brussels. I didn't want to take my instrument and he happened to be free, so that's very nice to have an instrument placed for you there with a tuner. Uh, before I come, he's an exceptionally well tuner. And his instrument is a little bit, it's very like mine. I've played some pieces on it also on the channel. It was here, I think, two years ago. But anyway, it has a little bit less key depth. It well, doesn't want to believe me, but if we measure it, we have measured it once, it was, it's only on tenth of millimeters and you can really feel that. And then things go easier. Uh, but you lose a little bit of dynamic range then. Of course, that's minimal as an instrument compared to mine. The tuning was a little bit, so the, temp, the pitch was a little bit lower. And that, of course, reduces the tensions of the strings. Also, that gives you a little bit less dynamic range, sometimes, not always, but makes it easier to play, so. But, uh, it, of course, in that time, Beethoven was playing a piano for this, no doubt about it, but you in these sonatas, and I should list them up, I haven't go through them all, but again, these are dedicated to Baronin, so Baroness von Braun, and the more bravura pieces are dedicated to the to the males, to the barons. But I don't know if that's for for all pieces. So uh, 
I don't know where these ladies on played on. Maybe not all on the pianoforte. They were rich enough to buy one, you know. But clearly Beethoven had that in mind because that was in fashion in Vienna and composers. It's not like in our time, people, we do whatever we want. In that time, you were a little bit supposed to step in line. But great minds like Beethoven, not of course, not always did that or Mozart. Okay, so thank you for being here. Again, not forcing you to patron, but just closing with the fact that the patrons are really important for authentic sound. For those of you who've missed the beginning, we're now at 31 patrons. We will have a video call with the patrons on Wednesday, so basically you can support things we're doing from $1 a month. I hate talking about it, but it's really important to make everything we're doing now sustainable. And it's great to see that community grow and make things happen. Uh, only to feel that, that it's a financial support for these kind of live streams with you. And that's great. So, but I don't want to force you there. Um, I hope that the video calls will be a great way to interact more uh, in person. And maybe we're going to do some similar thing on YouTube as well. I don't know. I have to figure out for next month that I will give you as a premiere, so to say, July and August will be Bach, will Tempelite Clavier, one to eight. And we will have one recording every week for eight uh, consecutive weeks. And then the ninth week will be a live stream with all the one to eight live played for you. We'll have four masterclasses on the uh, pieces. And I'm thinking about um, also having a little bit more balanced uh, schedule between the temple research are we doing and it's important to cover that since the book of Lord and Guardian I really believe it's important to get the message out but to have the balance on performance and practice like we have in this master class to have short videos on each uh, predator and fugue to give you just some points and then elaborate those more in the live streams on the master classes that's on the evening every two weeks um, it would be nice also have a series but then I would Again, change my schedule. I don't like to do that. On talking, connecting Bach to Beethoven, what I'm trying to do here on the channel, and I think I really found my my thing that I wanted to share. I want to share it. How to, 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 my voice, although it's getting away. I mean, my kind of value proposition. It's clearer and clearer in my mind. It's so interesting to take a Bach piece and take a Beethoven piece, similar notation, similar bar structures, similar everything and see what we can learn from com combining them. And Czerny, which is somebody I bring up a lot, but he gave so much information, has of course given metronome numbers for the Bach, the Waltemperity Clavier as well. Some are mysterious, some, but overall they were great, metrically. But then he gave also the Italian names to the Italian character words or tempo words, whatever you like to call them. And if you then have a similar notation and you have a similar metronome number by Czerny given on Beethoven and on Bach, which is the same, same uh, Allegro Moderato, for instance, same Allegro Moderato, then there is a line, at least in Czerny's mind. And maybe give also eight videos on that. So that would be a crazy month. And but really fun to do because CP Bach will continue and as well but uh, those series I'm thinking about and we will upgrade but I'm not going to tell you the historical voices, voices I have a really crazy plan to share some more things with you than just one quote every two weeks but that's for another time okay If there's nothing more on your mind, I wish you all a good evening. It's all within time. A good evening, a good day, depending on the place on the planet where you live, or a good morning, good afternoon. And we see each other hopefully on Thursday with the recording. Love to have you there. Um, if not, maybe next Thursday or the Sunday in two weeks for another uh, masterclass. So thank you for watching and see you next time again. Bye.